A visit to Mount Rushmore. We have got one of the legendary faces on that legendary place. Bruce Wadian in this week's Pensado's Place. Let's roll it, Will. What's up, everybody? Uh, every, every week now for, what, 3,000 episodes, Herb? 3,000. I always tell you we've got a special show for you, and uh, I've always meant it. And I... I, I you guys know I overuse the word amazing, but I'm going to have to say it. Our guest today is just simply amazing, Herb. Absolutely. absolutely. And, uh, Wasn't kidding about Mount Rushmore. No, right? you weren't kidding about Mount Rushmore. Uh, I like that that's one. That's absolutely. Thank you. You were that. running low on puns. You couldn't find a pun for Swedeen <laughs> this week. Why would you ever put pun and Swedeen in the same, in the same sentence? And, you know, Bruce is renowned for his sense of humor. He's, uh, <laughs> well, we're talking about, about Bruce like he's, he can't hear us. Oh, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> say we weren't going to get him. I just said we weren't going to get but him he's in the opening. Renowned, no, he's renowned for his humor. Yeah. I, I mean, I just remember the story Ed Cherney told us Absolutely. about when he was taking a test to work at a studio and Bruce came by and gave him all the wrong answers. Mm -hmm. I, I asked <laughs> Bruce about that and he said, oh yeah, I just started laughing and mm -hmm. was proud of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to love a man that intelligent, that gifted, and with a sense of humor. I mean... Thank God, because we know ones without that, and they're not the ones. I'm telling you, yeah, yeah. You, you know how you can tell the people without a sense of humor that do what we do? Uh -huh. They ain't gonna be on this show. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's true. God, so um, I'm a. First of all, I want to give a shout out for Ryan for creating the graphic for Bruce that that, that, that reminded us of this new book coming out and, and some things that we're going to talk to Bruce about. That was a really, really well done graphic, Ryan's, I thought. Ryan's the best. And shout out to Zan Nakari. Zan's in exile in D.C. <laughs> <laughs> right, Zan. That's our guy. And, um, man, how do you want to get this thing started today? We're, we're do doing our... a completely unique show because we don't want to waste time on anything. We just want to talk to Bruce as much as we can. So let's get the uh, homework out of the way. A couple, okay, let's do couple that. things, we'll get to that. And we'll get to Bruce in a couple of seconds. Uh, you know the homework, guys. Uh, definitely reach out for us. Get in our corner office, which is obviously manned by our man Drew over here. The chat room is full. And Yay. you guys will get an opportunity to ask some questions and direct them to Bruce and Dave and myself. Can and I interject Drew. something here? Sure, absolutely. Okay. He used an SM7 on Thriller. No SM7 <laughs> on Thriller yeah, questions, no, okay? No, none of those. Right. We have a moratorium on those. We want you to go deeper. But anyways. I, I, I told Bruce, I, Bruce made me promise I have to pay him $20 for every question about the mic he used on Thriller. <laughs> well, well, then our audience will try to get in your pocket and make sure you Man. spend a lot of money. Uh, but nonetheless, so definitely get into uh, our corner office. You can reach us at our Twitter handle. You see the stuff up on the screen. At Pensado Place is our Twitter handle. Uh, at Pensado's Place. Actually, let me just say this really quickly. Somebody always in the chat room is talking about the fact that I keep the S off of Pensado's <laughs> Place and I named the show. <laughs> so the fact that wait, I wait, named wait, wait, the show. Well, my mom kind of had a little bit to name in <laughs> well, the show. Well, that's for sure. She had something. Okay. She didn't know it at the time. Okay. But anyways, like I said, what was up on the screen was our Twitter handle, uh, and it's back on the screen. Our guys are so quick. Uh, at Pensado's Place. Uh, you can email us at Pensado's Place at thisweekend.com <laughs> and obviously our Facebook and YouTube page. Um, Make sure you get to us. Make sure you get in our corner office. Again, it's a special show. And in a special week, you had a... We both stopped by an interesting place yesterday. Tell us a little bit about... Oh, the, man. You know what? Um, BAE guys. Yeah. I, I recently got some equipment from uh, BAE. Mm -hmm. uh, most people know them uh, already, but I, I knew them, but I didn't quite know how cool that was. So I'm going to share a little bit about that experience yesterday. Tell um, us about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm using their their 1073, mm -hmm. and um, man, if you put the if you put 1073 on a piece of gear, you're you're begging for comparisons. And man, this this what what they're doing over there, I was blown away. Pretty incredible. Uh, yeah, Mark Lofman is the owner, and um, he showed me some original uh, Neve 1073s that Rupert built. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> Mr. Neve, to you though, Herb. Mm -hmm. Well, and then he showed me some of the... For all of us uh, English people. <laughs> the, in the late 70s, uh, Neve was bought out by several companies. Um, no need to name names, but he showed me how the quality of the newer product uh, compared to the original Neve. Mm -hmm. And what he's done is he's from England. He sourced out the original Carnhill transformers. He sourced out the original Canford wire, the mm -hmm. Elma switches. And not only are they 
I mean, I think it's safe to say they're identical mm -hmm. and in some ways better because the tolerances that he's using now um, uh, are tighter than those original tolerances, tolerances and capacitors degrade and all that. Mm -hmm. And I, I went there not wanting to like them because mm -hmm. to us, because that's just Neve how is, you are. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, I mean, in some ways. Well, but that's what makes you a good. Well, arbiter. there's certain things about about the history of our profession. That, that we like the constancy of. You know, we, right. we don't want anybody to improve on something that we consider perfect. Right. And so he showed us his manufacturing and, and you know what, we ought to do an ITL on this rather than have me ramble and take time away from Bruce. But you know what, I, I think I agree, we should do an ITL on it. I, I got there a little bit late and mm -hmm. the thing that, I, that really struck me about Mark's posture is his just slavish devotion to quality. Oh. I mean, it's like a Ferrari, and he just wants well, it to remember, be... Well, you remember, you remember, we were talking to him, he, he said, yeah, I got this, I don't got that. I said, did you happen to be able to source out the original paint? And he goes, well, I tried. I'm yeah. like, the dude, is that serious? Yeah, and about the steel and stuff on the yeah, sides of things, yeah. he brought out all the stuff. Yeah. So, so, yeah. He, we, he hand wires these things. That's why, he, yeah. that's why, that's why they take so long uh, to manufacture is, is, is well, what was fun? The other part that was fun for me is I know you so well, yeah. and so by the time I walked in the door, I walked somebody who didn't who walked in not sure uh -huh. and was completely converted because of the quality of the stuff. Like there was oh. no salesmanship yeah. in it. It's just yeah. a high end yeah. piece of gear. I mean, good. his modules. You can take an original Neve module out of a console mm -hmm. and drop his in, and, and and you can't tell the difference. He well, does this thing where he sends out. An original Neve and his in the same power supply unit. Right. And 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 if, and if if you don't like it, send it back. And he's never got one back. I mean, they're that good. It'll be a, a cool thing to go through the next couple of weeks and do an ITL mm -hmm. and stuff. Like but the that. one of the things I'm excited about that Herb for for our audience is, um, Bruce and I were talking a little earlier today about when we started and we couldn't afford gear. Uh, uh, and so we had two options. Well, maybe three if you include stealing it. But uh, oh, I shouldn't say that because there's an investigation going on. You I might still be have a suspect. A, you, <laughs> you still have a warrant out <laughs> from the early '70s. But uh, a lot of us in, 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 in that time period, we we just had to make our own stuff. Right. And um, so a lot of the cats starting out now, they're on a limited budget, and I understand that. I fully understand that. And part of the purpose of this show is to bring you. Uh, bargains and let you know, um, you know, and, and, and a lot of things that BAE are going to give access to the same equipment, the same sound for a, for, for a significantly less money and it's, and it's an incredible investment. I mean, you can take the transformers out of his stuff and sell them on eBay, Fantastic. you know, I mean, they're that valuable. They're, they're identical. Let's uh, go to the guru. Man. What do you think? Okay, before we start talking to Bruce, um, I want, I, I've never done this, but I want you to get the most out of this interview because Bruce Woodin changed my life. He made a record called The Dude for Quincy Jones, and I had no idea that our profession was capable of producing such art mm -hmm. and such entertainment and such passion. And, and uh, when you first start out engineering, Herb, you, you think you suck. Then after about a month, you think you, you're the best. Nobody can touch you. And then over time, you realize and, and that no, you've got a lot to learn, mm -hmm. even to the point of of, of uh, I, I'm going to ask Bruce this question, but I would bet that he would answer that he's learning as much today, even more so because of technology, than he did when he started. So, which is another uh, yeah, hallmark of a genius. Yeah. He's, so I want you to listen to this interview, and I want your questions to be related um, to 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 learning from from Bruce and, and what I'm saying learning I'm saying it's not as important what he used as why he used it and how that information is going to make you better at doing what we do and uh, he's, he's a wealth of information nobody in our profession shares as much of what he's learned and and Bruce spent years perfecting and developing some of these techniques we're going to discuss and don't worry about making your drum riser eight by eight. Worry about why he chose that at a particular time to, to get a particular uh, something to happen. Bruce, sorry about that intro, my friend. Great to see you. How's the weather in Florida? It's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Man. But, uh, but Dave. Yeah. 
pull your shirt a little tighter, please. Oh man, it's not possible, Bruce. I just lost 80 pounds, and I it, I can't it, I can't afford new clothes. But I will compliment the warm, the warm, dulcet tones I'm hearing from your voice. They seem to be enhanced by your uh, tube traps back there. <laughs> they, they are. And Herb, uh, I'm happy to see that you know the value of dark colors in clothing. We're, 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 we're right here, Bruce. We're, we are right here, Abs absolutely. Bruce, you and Herb have a lot in common. One of the things that I want to talk to you about is... I think that you're a pioneer in so many ways, but, but you have been inspirational to me, not just in terms of, of sonics, in terms of philosophies, in terms of uh, things, but you also pointed out to me that a person can actually, uh, with pride, earn a living at our profession. You, you, you have been a champion of, of, of the business elements. Ed Cherney was very complimentary about you, and Herb is that same person also. He's, he comes from he comes from the other side, Bruce, from the record company side. But he's one of the good ones, and, and you know, a gifted, a gifted uh, businessman. So he's got a couple of questions for you in that area. You ready to jump right in? Absolutely. First of all, can we thank uh, Ramsey? Ramsey, he's he's been instrumental in all of this, and, and uh, an asset to you. I know it's not just a. Uh, uh, he's incredible. Uh, yeah, and uh, I understand that he's helping you put together uh, the third book. Uh, the first one, uh, the first book is called uh, uh, Make Mine Music Herb, and then the second book is In, in the Studio with um, Michael Jackson. And you know that, book, uh, that, that book just recently came out, but that book has been in the works for, for 30 years. And, and I've got to recommend both books because uh, not only is the information so useful, but um, you've documented with photographs and with anecdotes our profession in a way that 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 is just sorely lacking and i i, I much much kudos to you because i know this was a labor of love and and you, you've prov Thank you you've go ahead Thank i'm sorry bruce uh, yeah okay i'd like to say one thing first of all i want to congratulate everyone that's watching this and is in the music recording business because let me tell you something you pick the best gig in the world. <laughs> now, I've, I've been, yeah, that's very true. I've been around the block a couple times, and uh, there isn't anything that I would rather do than record and mix music. Amen. How about Amen. you, Dave? Bruce, one of the things that, Absolutely. one of the things that, that I'd love for our viewers to, to fully understand is your commitment uh, to excellence, passion, and to the music itself, and how how that's contributed to your success, probably more than your technical abilities. Well, I'm kind of perceived in the industry as Grandpa Techie, yeah. and nothing could be further from the truth. I'm not really all that technical, though I did have a minor in music at the University of Minnesota, but I also had... Uh, uh, minor in electrical engineering and it wasn't long before I figured out that music is where it's at mm -hmm. that's oh. the driving force between behind everything that I do yeah that shows in your work yeah thank you also it doesn't hurt at all to hook up with a good woman early <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know my wife for uh, B is, has been a tremendous help, and she's got incredible ears. And, and then let me tell you one other thing. It doesn't hurt to have a good dog in the studio either. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, actually, have, we have Drew, so okay. that's our... <laughs> actually, I have a 200-pound Great Dane. Oh, my goodness. And, and I would love, and, and a Border Collie, but... The Great Dane is the one that, boy, would I love to mix a record through his ears. Oh, Can you that's <laughs> funny. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Bruce, let's jump right in. Um, yeah. I've always felt that, <clears throat> um, that transients were something worth preserving, and it seems like uh, our profession is divided into two groups, one that, uh, that, 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 that 
appreciates the, the, the smoothness and roundness of transients and the other group like you and I that appreciate transients for what they can contribute to the process. Can you delineate a little bit your philosophy about that? Well, the way, let me tell you how I feel. Transients in music are part of the excitement. They're part of the groove. It's so much a part of the drum sound and so on that I will go to great lengths to preserve the transients in a music recording. And any of the tracks that I've done that you, you can just listen to them and tell how important yeah, transient yeah. response is to me. Yeah. This, uh, this kid ain't going anywhere towards the mastering room without all the transients being on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I, I agree. It's, it's like the, uh, it's something similar, maybe an analogy for, for the new students. Sometimes when you're trying to find a kick drum in a mix, you add some 10K to it. Sometimes when you're trying to find a vocal in the mix, the transients do something similar. It's, 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 it's the ability of the ear to, to, to pick them up that helps, helps you manipulate whether the, the certain things can be emphasized and found in the mix. Uh, is that the way you think of it? Uh, absolutely, but I would take that even a step further and, and say that uh, the excitement of the groove is all in the transient response of your mix. And uh, I'll do, well for instance, I'm a nut about not using compression in a mix. Mm -hmm. And I have a saying about that. Compression is for kids. <laughs> so, so think about that for a second. Then you'll get a little in insight into how I feel about transient response. What's the cutoff age for the definition of a kid, Bruce? Uh, 20, 30, 40? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I got to tell you. Um, I'm going to tell on how old you are. Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> all you got to do is count the tree rings. It ain't hard. <laughs> <laughs> you know the cutoff, what? The cutoff age for hearing is when you can't hear anymore. That's the cutoff. <laughs> well, in some cases, based on the records I'm hearing, that's about 19 or 20. Um, right. Yes, I agree. I agree. Um, I've said on, on, on this show before, compression and bus compression still confuses me to this day. I'm not sure. Every time I, 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 I've been blessed to, to, to meet and talk with people like yourself that I respect. Uh, and one of my questions is always explain your use of bus compression to me because I like it for a minute, then I take it off, and I always like it better when I take it off. And so I'm like, well, it must be my skill set's not quite right. Uh, no, no. What, what it is is uh, compression literally is a crutch. It's, I, I never use compression on the two bus or anything. I, and I have passionately hate compression, though I do have a few compressors in my arsenal, but... They're used only for specific things. You did. You did. Uh, uh, you did use an 1176 a lot on, on Michael's vocals uh, on a lot of occasions, didn't you? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, but very just a, as we say at the University of Minnesota, just a squirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's great. I got. I got. Uh, I got another one for you. Uh, you said, um, I hate mono, and I also hate surround. Uh, I, I don't want this to sound like a Bruce Dave love fest, but dude, I, I, I love that statement. Mono, I think if you're an engineer, you have to hate mono. It limits what you can do. It's like, it's like trying to box with one arm. In, in this case, you box him with one speaker, and then, and then uh, can you expand on that? And, and talk about um, true stereo as opposed to, to dual mono stereo. Right, yeah, that's a incredible uh, thing to try to explain though. Okay. <laughs> but, but, but no, I'm, I'm gonna have a stab at it here. Okay. And to me, uh, true stereo really represents the human hearing system. And to take it even 
a bit further, uh, you can do an awful lot with mono, but only so much. And you can't get any depth of field and all the dimensions that we can put into the music in stereo are lost forever. And, and uh, uh, I'm very, very passionate about that. You can see my control room here and my Westlake speakers and tube traps and uh, Christmas lights on the, that lets me know if the Christmas lights are on, that means the speakers are on, so I'm cool. Oh, wow. wow. You know, I mean, I, I don't want to get into the into cliches, but if if uh, if if mono worked, we'd have one ear. When back in the day, when we were trying to get rid of things that wanted to eat us, it kind of helped to have two ears to figure out where they were coming from. So I think I think stereo helps in in creating a lot of things. While we're on the on the on on the, the subject of stereo. Um, uh, one of the things you're known for is pioneering the the use of the uh, of the uh, um, uh, Blumline pair. Not being German myself, I hope I didn't destroy that pronunciation. But but the Blumline pair of Mike's uh, uh, the technique of, of using that was a quest of yours to try and enhance this, the, the the perception of what you heard in the room and bring that accurately through a set of speakers perception of space and uh, what I would like to do I have a uh, gorgeous little studio here and my grand piano my Yamaha grand piano is set up just a few feet from away from the control room mm -hmm. and I'd like to if it's okay I'd like to move the camera over there and show you what uh, this is not exactly bloom line pair but uh, show you how I would use stereo true stereo recording in recording a, a piano let's do it Bruce while you're while you're doing my into the lair segment this week we're going to call it into the uh, into Bruce's lair I'm going to talk a little bit while you do that and uh, the camera will be on me so just do what you got to do and then I'm going to kind of get them up to speed on what you're about to show them so go ahead Bruce so guys what I want you to what I want you to uh, take away from this is rather than waste our short amount of time we have with Bruce uh, after this is over uh, go look up on Wikipedia Bloomline, and you'll you'll get some really good graphics. Basically, it's it's taking um, two figure eight microphones and configuring them in a cer certain way to in to capture the stereo field. And then also uh, while you're there, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go pretty quickly with some of this stuff with Bruce. So we're gonna talk about uh, X Y miking. We're gonna talk about a lot of things. If you if you go to Bruce's website um, in the studio with BruceWedeen.com, uh, you'll see links to a lot of this if you read his books. So I'm not going to try to make today uh, a substitute for doing your homework, but uh, I'm trying to make today about what little time we have with Bruce to kind of clarify and amplify and get you started on, on some of these things. Bruce, you ready for us? Yes, I am. Oh, man. Here. Microphones. I love it. Look, look at this. Are those plug-ins, Bruce, or are those microphones? No, they're plugged-in uh, microphones. I got you. I hate plug-ins. <laughs> plug-ins my ass. <laughs> How do you really feel, Bruce? <laughs> That's funny. Okay, here's, here's my gorgeous 414s, uh -huh. uh, consecutive serial numbers. This microphone company, AKG, loves me. They wouldn't dare send me some doo-doo microphones. <laughs> if they did, I could hurt them. Who, who, who has sent you doo-doo in the past, Bruce? Actually, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to show you another mic in a minute that unfortunately nobody can have. It's a, it's a one-off uh, uh, vocal microphone from a f Swedish Finn 
dude by the name of Martin Cantola, but it's the most gorgeous mic I've ever heard in my life. Can we get that lower, Ramses? Look at it. See? No. Wow. Here. Okay, can you see that? Yeah, you've got, you basically, are you using a cardioid on both of those? Are you? Oh, they're, they're a figure of eight. Oh, okay. It's actually, uh, So this modified, would be a modified bloom, bloom line, right? Or it even could be classed as an XY. XY, okay. But you see this microphone here focuses on the high strings, which are shorter. Okay. You see, right, I can't... See right here, yeah, and then uh -huh. this, this microphone here focuses on the low strings. Now, the reason they, they're placed as, as they are is because, there, yeah, now you can see, because uh, uh, the low frequencies are non-directional. The high frequencies are very directional, so the space between the mic and the strings has to be very short. That's, that's important information. Yes. And, okay, let's move back a little bit, and we'll show you the whole doggone piano. Oh, my gosh. Is that a gorgeous instrument? It really is. That really is. I mean, that's... I a pal in, in uh, I forget where he is, but uh, he picked out this piano, oh, and it's unbelievable it sounds so good it sounds so good makes you want to hurt yourself <laughs> <laughs> that's another bruce Woodin quote i love it i love it walk over if we can to another part of the studio yeah and we'll I'm follow you bruce you know what this is so uh this is so cool uh, Ramses is, uh, uh, did he go to the steven spielberg like school he's like got some serious <laughs> cinemagraphic skills there Tell you, he's been yeah. every, everywhere. Oh, no. <laughs> the main thing is, he never gets to go home. Well, he's a second. He's an assistant. I mean, that, that's that's right. No, no, he's way more than an assistant. Yeah, you told me that he's a very trusted confidant, and he's actually been very instrumental in the new book. I understand too. Okay, so I'm going to move a tube trap out of the way. <laughs> Next, I'm going to move. Okay, Ramses, do your thing. You see that, Dave? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. That's that mic you were telling us about? Yes. This wow. is, uh, unfortunately, this is a mic you can't have. Yeah, but I can, steal that, I can steal that concept of using the tube, tube traps like that. Absolutely, and we're, Ramses is going to move in, and we'll show you the... The pencil, Ticonderoga number three technique for positioning <laughs> oh, the mic. Wow. Is that hot or what? That's hot. Do you have an endorsement with them, Bruce? The pencil company? <laughs> well, isn't that um uh, that's, that's beautiful. Uh, okay. The capsule what? on that microphone, is it is it a one off capsule or is the whole microphone constructed from a uh, capsule? I, I think I know Bjork has one. I have one, and Martin Kent Cantola has another one. Now he is—he's a guy you got to you people have to check out. Martin Cantola. He's Finn Swede. Okay. I'm Swedish. Can they find information on your website, or is that something we need yeah, to? I don't think so. But look up the. This is an NU47. Look this up, and then follow that website. Uh, the link into he's made another version of this that is really a great mic too wow. but a Swede mic with him huh oh it's got my name on it right now but i gotta show you something okay. everybody we're ready we're ready, hey, we're ready. Hey, we're ready. Just, this is we're gonna look up here see that bird yeah <laughs> yeah okay is that, is the, does that mounting have anything to do with the dog? <laughs> no, no. Okay, stay on the bird. That bird. That's a a bird that is only found in northern Europe. It's a giant grouse, and it is uh, my cousin's shot his ass and had it <laughs> stuck. <laughs> and, sent, and they sent him to me, and we had such a time getting that bird into America. 
You can't believe it, but it's here and it's on the wall. It's called in Swedish. It's called Shedda, and uh, but it's a giant grouse in reality. Wow! You can see some Grammy nominations in the background there. Oh, like like fifteen or twenty. My my question to you, Bruce, is is the bird doesn't absorb a little too much 4K? I mean, is it is it sonically <laughs> contributing to the room in any way? All I can say is absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, uh, you know, well, like uh, we're going to go back in the control room. Okay, okay. It's time for uh, time for my lageria, Herb. Uh, Herb just pointed out to me that I used the word cinemagraphic. I, 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 what the heck is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's Dave's form of ebonics. I, Anybody that's a regular <laughs> Dave Bonnick. Wait, wait, wait Dave a Bonics. Dave, Dave. Yeah. Herb. Yeah. Wait just a minute. I'm going to show you my pride and joy. Okay. I, I'm not Whoa. sure where I'm not sure where the camera was Whoa. going for a second. Whoa. Look at that. Is that an 800? No. The bird. That's a dude. Oh. This is an 827. Oh, okay. Ah. I can see it now. Yeah. The, the most gorgeous analog recording device on earth unless you're the assistant that has to align it yeah then then you'll be talking to yourself <laughs> <laughs> and and my wife b look at the bird on top wait a minute well, 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 what about what, how's that relate to your okay, wife you know, you know why that bird is there no i don't have a clue because all vikings are chicken thieves so I stole that damn bird. <laughs> and, and, I think we got a mechanism in place to get Bruce on the show again. <laughs> no Can you say, hey, Will, save this tape. We got evidence. Uh, 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 here's, here's another chicken. Holy cow. That's the no, 2K chicken, chicken, right? You don't know a cow from a chicken? No. <laughs> I don't. There better be a joke here, because you led me down a path I can't get out of here, Bruce. <laughs> oh, man. That's so cool. So, everybody, Studio if you want to sound like Bruce Wedeen, you need, you need a, a rare grouse, three chickens, a big dog, and Ramsey. Absolutely. And, and, and a Harrison console. Uh, and a border collie. A border, border collie. collie. Yeah. yeah. Bruce. That's incredible, man. I really, I really am, on behalf of my audience, thank you for the tour of, this, of the room. I love it. That's, uh, it, it, shows, it shows the fact that making great records is, 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 is a process of a mind that can, uh, that can see the humor in things and can see the technical elements, and, and it just shows a part of your personality that I don't think a lot of people, including myself, knew existed. And can stretch. <laughs> Say that again? And, and, and a mind that can stretch. <laughs> That's true. Very true. The, the microphone is, 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 is just beautiful. I, 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 when I come down there, I, I definitely want to hear what it sounds like. Hey, Bruce, I, I, I have a question for you. Um, when we had Ed on the show, Ed Turney. Ed Turney on the show, um, a, a great student of yours and, and a devotee to you. Uh, one of the things that he talked about, which I think is important to our audience, is you always approached the notion of being a recording engineer and a mix engineer and all that kind of stuff in a business-like context, that the business of it was just important. You want to speak about that for a second? Is that correct? Well, I probably should clear up a misnomer, and I'm going to lay one of my famous sayings on you, mm -hmm. okay? Uh -huh. Everybody pay attention. Music first. Oh, wow. oh. Don't ever forget that. Mm -hmm. Cool. Cool. You know what? Another one of your famous sayings that I like while we're on this famous saying thing is it's easier to be done than satisfied. Uh, Boy, uh, you've done your homework. Uh, no, it's not homework. It's, 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 it's trying to learn what the heck this profession is about. Uh, I didn't have the luxury of going to a school, so I just had to beg, borrow, and steal as many techniques from cats like you as I could. And I'm telling you, when I say the the dude, the, that Quincy Jones record, I I mean, I found out that you would take 
your master tape, make a copy of it and set it aside. I did that. Um, I mean, every, every, it seems like just about all the techniques I, I use at some point, I didn't know they all came from you, but I definitely do now, but they all emanated from, from, from your search uh, to, you know, to, to make the great, greatest recordings possible. Dave, 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 let me ask you something. Sure. Do you know why I took those tapes and put them aside? To preserve the transients. Went. Preserve the transients, that's right. I'm, because to me, uh, in recording American popular music, which is basically where I come from, mm -hmm. R&B, rhythm and blues, mm -hmm. the transients have to be there. They must be there, or a good percentage of the music is lost. Mm -hmm. A tragedy. This would be a good time to remind our audience that um, that you that you, you you made some incredible records with Count Basie, Duke Ellington, Mick Jagger, uh, Paul McCartney, um, Oscar Peterson, my favorite keyboard player of all time, and then uh, Carlos Santana. Uh, uh, another one of my favorites that doesn't get mentioned a lot is We, we Are the World. Uh, do you have fond memories of that session? No, because I didn't do it. I thought you I did. did We Are the World. Oh, I did not. That I was busy producing a band, a uh -huh. rock and roll band called Missing Persons. Oh, oh yeah, the drummer is one of my favorites. Bazio, yeah. Terry Bazio. Oh, what a drummer. What Holy. a drummer. And but uh so Quincy called me to come work on We Are the World and I said, Sorry Jones, I can't do it. I'm otherwise occupied right now. Well, wow. I apologize for that. Yeah. It sounds like he did, but who did do it? <laughs> no, I don't know. Oh, yes, I do. Umberto Catica. Oh, okay. Um, Bruce, let me ask you this. If you're uncomfortable with this, uh, first, I apologize, and secondly, I won't ever do it again. Um, if, a, if a kid starting out doesn't have access to some of the techniques, Blumline, X Y Mikings, uh, uh, that sort of thing. Do you have a substitute? Is there is there a way that you found that you can create some of the some of the uh, things that you create with those miking techniques uh, no, no, after sorry. the fact, like well, like with certain reverbs, certain early reflections, that sort of thing? No, no sorry, I'm it, sorry to disappoint you, but there are no substitutes for those techniques. Mm -hmm. You now do, do remember one thing. I didn't make hit records from day one. I was a poor Scandinavian kid from Minneapolis, Minnesota. I didn't have any money, but uh, I had parents that loved me dearly and were very supportive and, right. Right. and uh, were prepared to go to the wall for me. And, and that's their support. And then, you know, getting married to an incredible woman uh, who, who to this day supports me, a uh, hundred thousand percent. Wow. wow. One of the things that, that I was hoping to get into, and this might be a good time, is, is when, you, when you create a spot that you use for the listener to perceive a space, and then you later on might add some reverb to that particular sound, you give time for the space itself to be heard. So in other words, you might use a 120 millisecond delay on your reverb in order to let the actual recorded acoustics, the recorded space come through, and then the, 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 the manufactured, let's say, reverb takes, takes from then on. Are you still doing that? Dave, I think what you're referring to is what I would call pre-delay. Pre-delay, correct. Yeah, it's and it's uh, what you're doing is leaving that space of say 120 milliseconds mm -hmm. uh, open for the natural acoustics uh, of the space to be heard and to be felt, and and uh, it's very important. I still have my favorite EMT 252. Oh, that wow. is, oh, I'm telling you. If, and here's one thing I would like to advise the young people that are watching today. Be 
ready to put all your money, all your savings, everything into this profession. But let me tell you something, it's worth it. Yeah, I mean, just your mic collection alone, I could retire off of that. <laughs> I mean, it's incredible. I, ha I have 105 microphones, most of which I bought new. I have a U47 Neumann uh, long body uh, mic that I bought new that is, as far as I'm concerned, is priceless. I, and, did, the uh, math. I did the math, and uh, I know when you started, I know how old you were, and I know how old you were when you bought the, some of those Neumanns. You couldn't have been making enough money to afford those. You made a lot of sacrifices along the way just for your mic collection alone. I mean, is that an accurate statement? I mean, you must have not paid a lot of rent because you had a lot of expensive uh, microphones just, in your early 20s. Yeah, li living at home, uh, you know, I, I took advantage. And my wife has been so supportive anytime. Even we were married very young. I was 17, she was 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I would say, honey, there's a new mic out. I just, <laughs> I, just, I just have to have it. You know what she'd say? What? Get it. Oh, man. How long have you been married, Bruce? 58 years. My goodness, congratulations. I, I, I want to hear a round of applause from the staff on that one. It's, it's due mainly to my flawless personality. Ben, Ian, and Will just gave you a round of applause. Bruce, <laughs> I, I, one of the things I, I just have been foaming at the mouth to talk to you about is, and if I pronounce this wrong, synesthesia. Um, no. The concept of, of sound as color, I've been fascinated by that since I started doing this. Can I explain uh, that? Oh, please. I, I'm, I'm all ears. Okay, what I would like to make very clear is that synesthesia is damn near like a disease. <laughs> it can actually be very distracting. And what it means is that when I hear a sound, I see a color. Exactly. And I'll never forget, B and I were at the Grammys early in my career in Los Angeles, and there were playing one note and in the orchestra and I thought to myself, oh wow, that note is purple. I'm I'm dead meat. I won't be able to hear anything else through the thing, through the whole concert. But I did and it worked out great. But whenever and there are it, it's a small percentage of the population that has it, but it can be very distracting. And uh but it's also, it's almost like cheating. I agree. I agree. You know, and it's if... Uh, we uh, find ourselves <laughs> working in dark control rooms for no reason. I mean, well, we know the reason, but... Yeah, yeah, people, people ask me that a lot because I work in a very dark control room always. Mm -hmm. But it's not for the synesthesia, it's for distractions. Oh, I don't oh okay. <laughs> Because I find myself sometimes... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Bruce. Yeah, let me finish it. Uh, the human being is primarily a visual animal. Mm -hmm. Hearing is our secondary sense. Mm -hmm. And if we have to rely on our hearing, we're going to be very distracted when we see things in too much light. So I found that my mixes got a lot clearer and a lot cleaner when I turned the lights in the control room off. Wow. Oh. So just for the fun of it, Ramses knows how to do this. Turn the lights off. For a <laughs> you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. That's cool. You plan that, Bruce. Come on now. You plan that. That looks too cool. Is that hot or what? That is really hot. I like that. I, now I can see the Christmas lights. Yeah. A stupid question, uh, one among many today, I'm sure. But do you find that you mix a little brighter when the room is darker as opposed to when it's brighter? I, I've, been, I, I've been cognizant of that, um, that I actually mix a little brighter 
when the room is dark. Is okay. that a is is that just an idiosyncrasy or? I'll tell. I'll give you that to you in Swedish. Okay. Okay. Fuit snack. Uh, bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. I don't know a lot of Swedish, but I could tell from your expression. Yeah. No, I think I do that. I really do. Uh, Drew, back me up here, Drew. Don't let me look bad in front of Bruce. <laughs> so I'm in the chat room. <laughs> Speaking of that, let's, uh, let's bring in the chat room, bring in our corner office. Are you comfortable after answering a couple of questions from the internet, oh. Bruce? Oh, wow. Yeah, of course. Okay, please. Let's do it. Let's we do have it. a couple let's about Thriller and everything like that, so bear, bear with us. Okay. Um, but real quick, um, starting out for, this is for you, Bruce, and Dave. Um, did you start out as interns, and, went, and in your careers, do you remember getting a substantial pay increase as you progressed through it? from Reese Zerbic. Well, I would say that that person who asked that question has the wrong motive at heart. Right. You understand what I mean, Dave? I, do. I understand completely. I, I'm not even sure we ever got paid for this, did we? Well, I got paid very, very little, but then I started long before you. But, Dave but, is a kid compared to me. But also, too, uh, if you subtract what we've spent uh, from what we've made, it's, it's not a great deal when you talk about those microphones you've got and all the gear that we buy, you know? I don't know. All I know is that I have a great support group around me, starting with my missus. And... Actually, it started before then. It started with my mother and dad, who said, you know how dedicated my mom and dad were? They were on business in Chicago, and they sought out Bill Putnam wow. at Universal wow. and went and bragged on me to him and got me a gig in Chicago. Uh, was this, that was the same studio that you gave Ed the wrong, the wrong answers at, right? No, that was Paragon. The, Paragon. the student I'm referring to now is Universal. It's gone. Oh, wow. Gorgeous studio. Just phenomenal. I recorded little lightweight bands like Stan Kenton, Count Basie, Duke Ellington. You know, going back to the question that, uh, that, that, that we, were, we were answering, uh, you relate the anecdote about when you first started at that studio, your job was to just follow Bill Putnam around. And, and that was that was his way of teaching you. You didn't do anything. You just had to follow him around. I thought it, we were talking about days, but you're telling me that it's months. Oh, it was. He was uh, just at the point where he was going to leave for California and build uh, his studio there in uh, United Western. And but my he had heard of my work in Minneapolis, and where I did some pretty. Uh, big name artists like uh, Lionel Hampton, oh, wow. Wow. Uh, wow. and so on. And and uh, anyway, Bill said, uh, "Follow me around, kid. Don't talk too much." Well, to answer our, our our emailer's question, the pay grade for a follower arounder it can't be that high. So I know you 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 I, definitely. I don't, okay, this this is where we separate, folks. I don't remember what I got paid. <laughs> I know. It was, I know. For me, it wasn't an issue. I, I agree. Right. That's my point, too, Bruce. It's just not an issue. Yeah. Um, Bruce, um, people are commenting about your, your ideas on compression, and somebody actually wants to know, how do you accentuate and shape transients without compression? You, you use the proper microphone. Start. I think that most young people today, the biggest shortcoming is they don't know what music sounds like. Get your ass out and go find a good concert hall. Go to hear a great orchestra in a good concert hall and make notes. And, and, and that, that, that technique applies to all forms of music, correct? Absolutely. But my, my starting point was really in classical music because this is the, where all music starts anyway. So if you can learn what transients sound like in a good concert hall, you got nothing to worry about. That's a good point. Good. Give us another one. Yeah. Um, 
expanding on the, I'm sorry, synesthesia? Is, yeah, synesthesia. Expanding on that, uh, Bruce, does that usually translate into a more radical or conservative approach when you look at your decisions, EQ, compression, effects-wise, after the fact? Uh, how, how does it affect your mixing process? It actually, I've done everything that I can to eliminate it from my yeah. recording and mixing process because it's only a distraction huh. and it's a pain in the ass if you want to know. Bruce, the when you describe the, the bass frequencies as, as being dark and the high frequencies being kind of golden, that's, that's not a tool to help manipulate them? It's, it's a distraction? Absolutely not. It, it, synesthesia can be a terrible distraction. You, first thing you've got to do is learn what music sounds like. Go, and you know where I would suggest starting a great symphony orchestra in a great hall and hearing some very dramatic music uh, uh, that has a lot of transience in it and uh, use that as a starting point for, as a grounding point for your ear. Uh, what, we have time for one more? Yeah. Sure. Cool, cool. Uh, from Jules Mixer Record. Uh, Bruce, what's your favorite stereo mic configuration for recording a big sound source like a choir? And what's your approach while mixing to make it sit in the mix and don't mask the main source, i.e. the main vocals, drums, so on? Hey, Bruce, can I answer that? Huh? Yeah, go ahead. Listen to Man in the Mirror. Listen to the choir on Man in the Mirror. And that's a bloom line pair, and that choir, it was a, it was a gospel choir. It's the and, Andre Crouch choir. And I defy any human being to duplicate that. Uh, he'll, he wow. tells you how he did it, he tells you who did it, where he did it, and I defy but, anybody to make that. Dave, 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 it's so simple. There's nothing to it. You get, you know what you do? You, I'll give you the perfect explanation for how to get a great choir recording like Man in the Mirror, go out and get yourself a great choir. <laughs> <laughs> That's where you start. But, uh, kudos on, 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 uh, on, on the, the, the one thing that, that impresses me about you is the amount of effort, time, and energy that you'll spend on one three-second part of a song. I mean, you got people singing through five-foot tubes. You got people standing on eight-foot drum risers. You got all of these things, and that's not the three and a half-minute song you're trying to make special. It's it's it, it mixing in your brain seems to be, and recording in your mind seems to be a collection of little smaller special moments as opposed to trying to create the one huge blockbuster moment, which you ultimately create from a series of little moments. Uh, absolutely true, and and the one thing that I find interesting about all of this that, and I want to leave this with all the young people that are here, and that is, if you're in deadly earnest about music recording, you're going to be busy. <laughs> that's that's that, that's the statement of the day, Bruce. Say that again. That's very important. If, if you're truly in earnest about recording music, you're going to be a busy person. i got to say one thing. Can please. I tell you something? Please, please. I just did one of my master classes. When did we do the last one? January. Yeah, I, you know, this was a while ago. It was January. And four young ladies came to the master class. And you know what? They killed it. Wow. Wow. So you guys, we kind of tend to think that this is a masculine world. Forget it. And actually, women can hear higher frequencies. Than right. That's, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Your, your master classes, uh, man, uh, I'd love to come hang around and be a fly on the wall of one of those, but Ed Cherney's helping you with the newest one, right? Oh, I love Ed Cherney. He's my boy. He's he is the greatest. You know what? You know how dedicated this dude is. Yeah. He, yeah. Have I got time for a little story? Now we got all the time in the world. Okay, great. What 
Ed is from Chicago, like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and and I lived in Chicago. I'm from Minneapolis originally, but I lived in Chicago for a long time. And Ed, as a very young man, worked at a studio called Paragon Studios in Chicago, and it was a wonderful stu studio. The only problem was it was a three-story walk-up, so that was a bit of a problem. But but Ed would come from his home in Chicago, and I was living out in Mount Prospect in the Chicago suburbs, and I uh, uh, rode the train, Chicago Northwestern in. And you know what Ed Cherney did? He came to meet me at the train as I got off the train, only to be able to sit on the bus and ride to the studio and talk about recording music. Wow. Wow. So all we did. That's the kind of a guy Ed Cherney is. Yeah. His, his, records, his records show a, a, a lot of homage to what he learned from you also. He's, he's, he's one of the greats. We're we're getting a little low on time, so I figure you can't walk out on me. So I'm gonna save the one question that I know you're gonna hate for that. Because <laughs> if you happen to walk out, I'll, I'll fake the end of the show. But please answer me, because I'm really curious. What converters do you use to get in and out of Pro Tools, Bruce? Uh, Yuri, uh, what is this thing? I'm sitting right next to it. Oh, the 2192s. Oh. Uh, I, uh, uh, Ramsey, is that right? Is he telling us the truth? I, I yeah. <laughs> uh oh. I did, uh oh. See, he hesitated though. Didn't he? he did, didn't he? <laughs> Are you using something yeah, yeah. No, no. You got the UA. Yeah. yeah. Universal. Yeah, twenty one. I got a bunch of them. When, when I ask for a piece of equipment, they come in boxes. Many of them. Wow. Which, hey, Will, make a note. Use Bruce Winnie's name next time. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, uh, man, sincerely from the bottom of my heart, uh, I expected a, a, a wonderful afternoon with you, and it's, it's just surpassed all my expectations. I learned a lot. I'm going to be a better mixer when I go back and work this afternoon. I can't thank you enough. I owe you any time you need a favor from me, Godfather style, which is, yeah. which is your uh, relationship to me. Just yeah. ask. I'm there. I'm, I'm there, my friend. This was just a pleasure for me. And thank you so much. I hope I ask the questions that are going to teach our audience how to fish instead of just yeah. tossing out a bunch of carp for them to listen to. Yeah. And uh, next time, button your shirt. <laughs> I, I, I won't wear a shirt next time. Whatever it takes to get you on the show. Oh, no, I ain't coming then. <laughs> okay, Bruce. I hate to I hate to do this. I don't know how to do it. Uh, I'm gonna let Herb actually say goodbye and wrap this up. Uh, this was an emotional moment for me. It was a pleasure. Uh, the dude, I want everybody to go check that out, and I also want you to check out the new work Bruce has done. His consistency over the years is exemplary. The man gets better every time he steps behind a console. Herb, you want to wrap this up for us? Uh, just by saying thank you so much. Uh, we're honored. I think in all of our journeys, there's a point, particularly when you're on my side of the business, that if you get a chance to spend any time with Quincy Jones and the people that were around him, the quality of your game was raised. And I remember being in the studio with you and was just so in awe that I was in the studio that I couldn't even approach it. You were in the studio with Bruce Wadeen? Well, I, when, I, when I was working with Brian McKnight, Quincy liked using Brian on some of his collaborative oh, records. Right. And oh, I yeah. found myself in the studio going, oh my God, you know, like, here's Quincy Jones in this chair and here's Bruce Wadeen in that one and John Robinson's on drums. And there was a Quincy retinue that was just the best of the best. And, just uh, Talking to Bruce, I get nervous. I was reading his books and I got nervous. That's how much respect for the man I had. Well, you, you know when you're in the presence of greatness. For one more little quickie. Yeah. Sure. Let me tell you something about Quincy. Uh-oh. The most honorable man in the world. Absolutely. I love him. Love, as we say in the studio, I love his dirty drawers. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, I, can't, uh, he, I can't top that. See, guy that I know of in music production who has studied uh, orchestration with Nadia Boulanger, who, oh, wow. who taught Ravel. Wow. Wow. 
that says something. Yeah. Bruce, we couldn't do just thank you so much. Oh, we're we're honored you've yeah. elevated our show. Uh, hopefully, fans and, and watchers <laughs> and listeners, um, God, if you can't get anything out of this, you you got to rethink what you're yeah. doing. Uh, go to all of our social stuff. You know, yeah. you know our pages. You know our handles and all the stuff that's up on the screen. Uh, make sure you get your comments to us. Um, God, what can you say, Dave? All just... I can say is I hope Bruce's new book comes out real quick because I've got a, I've got his word. He's going to come back when it comes out. And Fabulous. Bruce, if I don't see you before then, I'll see you in a couple of months down in Florida. Thank you. Adios, amigo. Thanks, Bruce. We out? Mm -mm. Well, then let's say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I said goodbye. No, no, now you can say goodbye. Uh, I'm flustered. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah. Uh, I know I didn't get to all your questions, but... Bruce has agreed to come back on, so it's, it's, it's been a blast. I'm going to go digest all this, and, and thanks for listening and watching. It, it means a lot to us, and I'll see you soon.